What's happening guys? Welcome back to the workshop. Now in this video we're going to build this nice, simple, elegant little box. It's made from walnut and maple. It's completely made from scrap offcuts that I had in my scrap bin and completely built with hand tools. So this is going to be an entire hand tool build. No machines, no noise and no dust. Just nice, relaxing hand tools and it's a good little box to build to help develop some hand tool skills which is what I wanted to do was to work on my hand tool skills for a bigger project that I have coming up. So I wanted to get some practice in and use up some of that scrap wood. So this is the outcome. So without further ado, let's jump in and build a nice little box completely with hand tools. Let's do it. Okay guys, let's crack on with this project. Now, the whole idea for this is to build a little box from scrap wood. So I have a low, whole pile of scrap wood, maple, uh, walnut, ash, sapili, oak, bits and pieces down in that scrap bin down there. I wanna use some of them up, but I also wanna practice using my hand tools. So I wanna try and build a little box completely with hand tools, not using any of the machines, if I can get away with it. So this video is more about me practicing and enjoying using some hand tools as it is a how-to video. I'll share some of the techniques that I'm gonna use, but it's kind of just a watch along, build along kind of a project. That's the kind of idea. So let's have a look at the scrap woods that I'm gonna use. Again, I have an idea, but not quite a plan. So this will evolve as we're going along, but I'll show you our starting point. Let's do it. Okay, so here's what we have. I have a couple of little blocks of rough um, sawn walnut here. So I think the fact that these are similar size, we shall use these for the walls of our box. So it's gonna be nice and small. These are a little bit on the thick side, so we might try and thickness them down. Again, we have to prepare all these with the hand plane because uh, three edges on all of these, or four edges on most of them, are actually still rough sawn. So we need to prepare that. I think I'm gonna stand a little box on a plinth then. So we're gonna build a maple plint out of all these kind of maple offcuts that I have. Then for the base, I'm going to want to use my uh, plow plane in this video build. So I want to give this little Lubin Quangsheng plow plane a go. I haven't had much chance to use it, so I want to use it in this. So I'm going to route in a dado, or plow in a dado into the bottom of this. We'll slot in our base that way. Might make just a walnut base to go in there. And then I have a kind of a offcut of maple here. Again, it's like just a veneer. It's about uh, probably five mil thick. So maybe I might get a slide in lid. That's kind of what I'm thinking at the moment. Now that's, at this point, this could all change. Depending on how many pieces I mess up halfway through this build, uh, the box could come out looking totally different. But that's what we need to do for now. That's the idea. So first thing I want to do is take these, put them in a voice and plane them all up. So I want to establish a face side, face edge, an opposite side and an opposite edge. Get all these nice and square and then we can look at dimensioning our box from what we have left. Let's do that. Okay, so I'm gonna crack on. I'm gonna get establish my face side, then I get my face edge, and then my opposite face and opposite side. Now I have a full video on how to prepare stock by hand, so we're not gonna get into that here now. I'm just gonna crack on and do this and get to use my nice uh, number five Quangsheng plane that I was sent by Match at Workshop Heaven. And uh, I get to use my Moxon voice. I haven't got to use this in a while. This is my Camlock Moxon voice that I designed and built. So it's an original design and it works great. I also have a Camlock leg voice if you guys are interested in that. So I'm gonna crack on now and we're just gonna plane a face side on all these pieces. Shouldn't take too long.
well, here we are. We have the box sides dimensioned up so everything is square, true, and flat. I thickness it down to 20 mil because they were a little bit on the thick side. I've measured or marked miters at each end, so I'm going to miter all this box to put it together. Just keep it nice and simple. So it's going to be 13 centimeters in length. It'll be 13 centimeters all around, so 13 centimeters square or 130 mil. Then I just took my marking gauge and marked up 5 mil and scribed a line on the inside face of the box. So I'm going to take my plow plane now and I'm going to put a six mil uh, dado inside in there that's going to take the uh, floor of the box or the base of the box will sit in just like that into a dado that goes all the way around now my fence is a little bit big and these pieces are a little bit on the small side so I'm going to, have to take the fence off and just use the metal fence and uh, yeah so an opportunity to use the plow plane okay so you can see the plow plane is all set up here and I didn't scribe two lines for my dado. I only described one line because I can set my blade to the edge of that. And that blade is exactly six mil or just a quarter of an inch. And uh, that will give me a quarter of an inch or six mil dado. So there we go, already set up. I removed the fence. So we are just using the small metal fence. So that allows me to get uh, exactly where I need to be on this small piece. And I have a depth stop set to five mil. So let's get on it. Okay, let's cut this dado. Now, a little quick tip for you. I actually learned this from Matt Hesley. So, with this plane, it's best to start from the end. So, take a small cut and another cut and work your way back to the start of your dado rather than starting from the end and taking one big long cut that could track off or you could get a wobbly line and it will continue to, to follow that wobbly line. So, the best thing to do is to start from the end, take a cut move back, take a cut, move back, take a cut, move back. That way you always have a straight cut for your blade to track into. So that's a good little tip for you. I'm gonna get on now and cut this. Again, with this little tool, it's very important just to keep the fence pressed square because it can rock. So you wanna make sure that fence is nice and square to, and your cut, to your cut. And uh, yeah, it's a case of just work your way back. All our dados are cut and this little tool is really really nice it isn't just about as quick as using a router by the time you have your router table set up and stuff and all the noise and all the dust it is a lot more pleasurable to use hand tools than power tools in my opinion it takes a little bit longer but not much now it is a dainty little tool so uh, if you have big shovel hands like me you're going to struggle for a little bit of real estate on it and um, it's kind of hard to hold on to you can't quite get three fingers in here more two fingers it's a little bit uncomfortable but works really really well and gives you a super clean nice dado so let's rock on Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is cut our miters just like that. Now, I'm using the Ryoba saw. This is a Japanese hand saw. This is a cross-cut saw, so I'm gonna stay to the wayside. I'm gonna stay a couple of mil away from my line. Then I'm gonna take them to the shooting board and we're gonna sneak up on it with the hand plane to get them absolutely perfect, or snake up on it, as you might say in Ireland. So, let's cut these. I have the shooting board set up complete with the 45 degree miter jig. Now this is for doing box miters rather than picture frame miters. So it's for miters that are going through our timber in this direction rather than this direction, if you know what I mean. Again, I have a full build series on this. Um, they're by far and away my most popular videos. They have over 100,000 views, my five woodworking jigs and another five woodworking jigs video. So if you wanna check that out, I will link them below. Or just go check my channel and you'll find it all there. So now, this just goes against the fence. It holds it exactly 45 degrees to my plane. I'm using my low angle jack plane. If you don't have a low angle jack plane, don't worry. The number five or number five and a half is perfectly uh, good for this as well. Just a low angle jack plane is a little bit better for end grain, but Rob Cosman, he swears by his number five and a half. He doesn't use a low angle whatsoever. And he swears that a really sharp blade in his five and a half is as good as the plain blade that's in the low angled jack plane. And uh, yeah, it's not bad. And there's a lot more weight in your number five or your number five and a half than there is in the low angle jack plane because there's a lot less metal in that. And you do get a good finish on it. I just like to use this one because it's a little bit better for end grain. So. It's only a case I just work that now. 
and this ensures that everything is square and that it's exactly 45 and I'm just going to work this back to my line on each of my mitres. There we go, we're all finished up and uh, we have exactly 90 degree uh, corners with nice closed up mitres. So they're gonna work out really, really nicely. So now that I have this section made, I can make my base for my box, which is gonna sit into my dado. So I have to decide what to make that out of now. So I'm just gonna look for a piece of scrap that I can make a floor for this box out of. Hi right guys, I have a piece of walnut again from the scrap bin. This is just an off cut that I cut off on the bandsaw a long time ago. So this will do for the base of my box. Now, I need to do the exact same process again. So we've got to prepare this piece of stock because it is just rough cut. So I need to flatten one side, establish a face, establish a face edge. And then we need to get a parallel face and make this thickness this down to exactly six millimeters. It's roughly about 10 millimeters now. So we need to take it down four mil. Then I need to cut it in half and glue it, those two pieces, side by side. That will allow me to get a big enough piece to make the base of my box. The internal measurement of my box is exactly 10 centimeters or 100 mil. And I've got a five mil dado either side, so that's an extra 10 mil. So it needs to be 110 mil uh, square or 11 centimeters. So I'm gonna crack on with this now and uh, just start planing away and enjoy some hand tool woodworking. So any of you guys that are new to woodwork, and I'll just give you a quick little description. I won't go too in depth into what I'm doing here. So I've established a face side, and now I have two edges that are exactly 90 degrees to this face. So then I just took the blade that I made my dado with. I set my depth on my marking gauge to exactly the width of that blade. And from my face side, I pulled the line here and here. Now, when I thickness down to this line on both sides, I will have a perfectly fat parallel face to this face, and this piece will be exactly the thickness that I need. You can see down here, I'm almost down to where I need to be already, so I just need to be careful down this end because that's just about half a millimeter above the line. But yeah, I can just work my two lines down on both sides now, and that should give me an exactly parallel face to this face. So, nice and flat, square, and true. You get on that. So our base for our box is all planed up and it goes into our dado, lovely. So, happy day. So I'm gonna cut this in half now. I've just marked it with a square. I'm just gonna chop it straight in half and then we're gonna glue these two pieces side by side and uh, let that sit overnight. And I'm gonna come back to this tomorrow. So, this is the base of the box, almost complete. As soon as this, is glued up and everything is nice and square. We can cut a square piece out of this, which is exactly 11 centimeters by 11 centimeters. And then we can glue our box together. All right guys, here's another little handy jig for you. Hopefully you're getting a few tips from this video as we go along and build. So I want to glue two skinny pieces of timber together. So again, hold fast are ideal for making quick jigs. So two pieces of ply with either side of a bit of mold release tape in the middle. So that when I glue it, it doesn't stick to this. You can just line up your pieces and then just pop them down. Now the pressure, between the two of these, keeps them pushed together. If you want, you can clamp something on top of this as well just to keep them hold down, but these pieces are so small and so light. A little tap from the side, a little tap down, and that is all the pressure you need to glue these together. So it's nice and handy, so let's do it. That'll be plenty. Perfect. They're nice and flat. And always give that little tap just to tighten it. That is rock solid and going nowhere. So now we can let that sit. And uh, as soon as that's done, we can square this up and then we can assemble our main body of our box. Right guys, so the base is glued up. I just popped it out of the jig. Let, gave it a few hours to set, popped it out, cut it out square to the exact measurements I needed to. Again, the same as cutting the mitre joints, I cut it just proud of the line. 
and then squared it up on the shooting board. Now the shooting board is an excellent jig if you're into your hand tool woodworking for getting exactly 90 degree edges. So the fence is exactly 90 degrees to the line that the plane runs along and the plane is exactly 90 degrees to this bed. So it keeps everything square and true and it's a nice way to finish up. So once you establish one straight side, put that against your fence and you know that this side then will be exactly 90 degrees and you can get a perfect square on your shooting board. Again, if you want to see how to build one of these things, it's in my woodworking jigs video. Again, you'll have this together in half an hour. It's a nice, simple one made from plywood, extremely cheap and easy. It's just made from offcuts of plywood, but it's a fantastic tool. Now, enough about that. I need to glue this box together. Now, it's getting late tonight, so this is going to continue on tomorrow, but I want to get it glued up before I work out of the workshop tonight. So I'm going to do a bit of sanding on this and get it glued up. Now, you've seen me glue boxes a hundred times before, so I'm not going to bore you with that so i'll get on and do a bit of sanding and when i see you guys again it'll be tomorrow and our box will be glued up and then we can start to make all the things like the plinth and the lid and decide what we want to add on to this box to make it a little bit nice and a little bit different so i'll crack on and i shall see you guys tomorrow right guys we are on to day three and i've made some progress so i want to get you guys all caught up to where i am the box is all glued up now again i didn't show the gluing process because it's quite boring and you've probably seen me do it a thousand times before on this channel now if one of you guys or any of you guys are wondering why i didn't use miter splines to hold these miters together or miter keys it's because the base is in a dado inside an all four walls and that's glued in and that's going to hold help hold all the walls together so it's pretty strong and again it's only a small little box so there's no real need to put keys like i did in this larger box here i put it dovetail keys in to hold those mitered corners together because gluing into grain to end grain is not a very strong joint but uh, the fact that the base is inside it all that's going to help hold it all together now i went ahead and made the lid again the exact same process as making the base i just took some maple uh, made it the same dimensions as the base just made it a bit thinner so it's 20 mil by 20 mil again cut a dado inside in it and I put in a walnut insert. Again, the walnut insert is glued in, so that's gonna hold everything together and help hold all those miters together too. After that then, I took the leftovers of that 20 by 20 maple and I made a plinth. So I took the plow plane and uh, just put a rabbit or rebate all the way around it. So that play, plow plane uh, kind of doubles up as a small rebate plane, which is nice and you get a nice little clean cut uh, rebate. So again, it's quite enjoyable to use the hand tools. There's no noise, there's no dust, no headphones, no dust masks, just tipping away with the hand tools and then uh, making the small box from scrap and practicing some skills as well. So there are all the things I did. You're all caught up now. And uh, yeah, so now I have to get this thing sanded. I have to get the box fit on the plinth and then it's gonna be final assembly and finish. So let's do that. guys there we go our box is all glued to the plinth now and uh, again no splines in the plinth because the side walls are all glued to the box both on the side and on the bottom so that's all long grain to long grain so that's a really strong glue joint so again i don't want any splines i want nice clean lines and the fact that we're kind of putting everything inside of everything and gluing it it's going to be fine and again it's just a little box at the end of the day so there's not going to be any real pressure on this so we'll let that set up now for a few hours let that all go off we we'll get it all cleaned up plane it all up sand it all up then we need to fit the inside of the box so i built some internal parts of the box so the lid is going to operate the exact same as this one so it's a box within a box and the lid then sits on top of the internal box so that's what we're going to do i quite like that design for a box so I'm going to repeat that again. Again, I just made these pieces on the shooting board with the 45 degree jig. So it's an, again, you can make all little things like this very, very easily. And uh, these will be the internals in my box. So when that's glued, I'm going to glue this in. And uh, when that's all done, we'll jump back in. We'll get the lid fit and then we'll get the finish on. Okay guys, so the box is just about done and the place is a mess as usual when I do a project. Now the box lid is pretty tight and pretty snug. So we have a good solid airtight fit all around, which is nice. 
So um, I've just installed the inner inserts there, so there's a bit of glue, stuck that in, quite simple. Again, all just little 45s. And uh, yeah, that gives us a nice tight lid for our box. So now what I'm thinking about doing, because it's very square and not much detail on it, I'm going to chamfer the edges. I'm actually going to chamfer the line between the lid and the box as well. And I'm going to put a chamfer on the base just to add a little bit of detail to the box because I think it, it's lacking something. I mean, it's very square, very clean lines, but um, yeah, I think it needs a little bit of detail in my opinion. So that's what we're going to do. So I have my little block plane here. I'm going to mark a small chamfer around the lid, around the gap between the lid and the box and between or around the plinth as well. And then we're almost there. It'll just be a case to get the finish. And I'm going to try this food safe finish. I haven't used this before, so it'll be a test piece to try this out and we'll see how it goes. And then maybe I can store some sweets or something in this little box. Who knows, maybe some nuts, something like that. Anyway, let's get on and mark out our chamfers. Okay, so I'm just going to mark out this chamfer. Now I'm going to keep it nice and small. So it's going to be two and a half millimeters by two and a half millimeters. So I'm just going to pull a line around the top edge of the box for the lid chamfer. Just like that. And then we can do a line around here. And then we can work to those two lines. I'm going to do that then for the underside of the lid as well. Top of the box and the plinth, like I say. There we go. We want to do it on this side now as well. So one little tip when it comes to doing this chamfering to stop you getting breakout on the edge. If you just work one side, just take a little bit off, almost down to the line. Then just come off and take that other corner. Work that off just down to the line, nice and easy. Then you can take full cuts all the way across without worrying about breaking out at the end. There we go, three chamfers, both sides of the lid, one on the box and one on the plinth itself. And that really adds a nice little detail to the box. So that finishes it really, really nicely. It makes it that little bit less plain. And if you do ever end up with some gaps around your lid, it's a good option to go to because it will completely disguise any gaps you have. It'll take the eye away from them and it looks really, really nice. So that's that done. All that's left to do now is get a finish on this. Okay, time for my favorite part, and that is applying the finish. And like I said already, we're going to use this food safe finish from Chestnut. I've not used it before, so again, it's going to be see what happens when we put it on. It's a bit of an experiment, but I might put this box on the kitchen table and keep some nuts or something like that in it, or just some sweets, something like that. Um, it'll be a nice little uh, decorative box to leave on top of the table. So we'll put some food safe finish on it. And uh, like I said, I've not used it before, so why not test it out? So let's get it on. All right, well, it's completely clear anyway. And there's no odor. So uh, let's try it out. Well, I can see straight away that it is not going to color the wood. So the maple is going to stay nice and white with this finish. So there's no dye in it. Like a Danish oil um, will yellow things slightly. Now sometimes that's preferable and sometimes that's nice, but if, you, if you're after um, a really clear, non-tinting finish, this might be a good option. As you can see, it looks really nice on the walnut. And it's keeping that maple really white, which is nice. And there is zero odor from it. So, I mean, that's a good sign when it comes to uh, putting stuff near food. It soaks in. They say it's dry to the touch within 30 minutes. So we'll see. 
looks really nice on the uh, walnut. Okay guys, there we go. It is all finished. We have the finish on it now. So um, it's a nice kind of matte to satin sheen you get on it. Now you can build up the layers on this and get a little bit more of a satin sheen, but um, you won't get a high gloss finish with that stuff. But it finishes nicely and it keeps the wood its natural color, which I really like. It doesn't yellow it. So the maple stays that nice kind of white color and you can really see the contrast with the walnut. So again, made from off cuts of scrap, all completely made with hand tools. It's a nice, simple little project just to practice some hand tool skills and help develop the hand tool skills. That was the whole point of this build. That's what I wanted to do was just to develop some of my hand tool skills because I'm planning a bigger project that I want to completely make with hand tools. And I have to say it is thoroughly enjoyable just using the hand tools. No noise, no earphones, no dust mask, apart from the sanding. But uh, if we won't mention the fact that I used an orbital sander, I cheated a small bit. I didn't want to completely hand sand this. So we used the orbital sander. So a little bit of noise and dust there, but hey, it's sanding. I don't think anybody likes sanding. So yeah, there we go guys a nice tight lid as well so it's airtight so i think uh, we put something nice in this now so maybe some nice sweets and that will sit in the middle of the kitchen table or in the kitchen somewhere i think again with the food safe finish we can put whatever we like in it so there you go guys hopefully you got some information from that hopefully it gives you some inspiration uh, if you want to do a little hand tool box yourself hopefully you'll feel confident to go ahead and give it a bash Keep it nice and simple, nice and elegant like that, and you shouldn't have any troubles. So if you enjoy that, guys, give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, think about subscribing. All comments and questions below. If there's anything you want to know about the tools I'm using or any processes I used, or if you think I should have done something differently, be sure, get in the conversation and comment below. Give it a thumbs up. Like I say, that really helps me out a lot. And if you want to share the video, feel free to do that as well. So that's it, guys. It is definitely time for some beer now, so I'm going to get out of here. I shall talk to you in the next one. Take it easy.